Michael Burry has recently asserted that we're in the greatest speculative bubble of all time. I'm going to go through what that's basically referring to, and as you can probably guess from the background behind me, it likely is referring to inflation, although he was rather vague about this. Now, I have a background in finance, I have a PhD in finance, I'm a quant and an angel investor, so obviously things like bubbles and inflation and the possibility of the market tanking are directly relevant to me. But if you think I've missed anything, let me know that in the comments below, or if you think Michael Burry is getting at something in particular, also it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts as well. And obviously it'd be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so let's have a look at what Michael Burry said. And to see this, we will need to go over to his Twitter. So here we have Michael Burry's Twitter feed. And basically what he said in one of his few recent tweets in that he had gone on hiatus from Twitter for a long time and now has seemingly returned, albeit possibly momentarily. He said here, people always ask me, what is going on in the markets? It is simple, greatest speculative bubble of all time in all things. By two orders of magnitude. Hashtag flying pigs 360. All right, well, let's unpackage this. It does look, how will I phrase this? Incoherent is probably not totally accurate. Weird is possibly a better way of putting it. So apparently it is the greatest speculative bubble of all time. Apparently this is in all things. And apparently it is by two, not three, not four, not 10 orders of magnitude. And also flying pigs 360. Now, I don't quite know why we've got flying pigs 360. Are they doing like a 360 degree rotation? Who knows? In any case, that's basically what he's referring to. So we can see from this tweet that basically thinks that there's a speculative bubble and he thinks this isn't everything. So what could this refer to? It could refer to stock market valuations. It could refer to crypto valuations. It could refer to real estate, possibly even other asset classes like cars or art or whatever the case might be. Furthermore, he's asserting that this is, there is this bubble and it is also speculative. This would tend to imply that people are just speculating what asset prices are going to be, as opposed to there being a fundamental reason for these prices being reasonably high, which is to some extent inherent in it being a bubble. Now, I suspect the two orders of magnitude thing is, I don't know, surplus, like that's a random number. And then I suspect the flying pigs thing is probably him making some reference to pigs fly. Uh, now, I don't quite know what he's referring to here, there's been some speculation that maybe he's thinking this is a reference to Jerome Powell and Jerome Powell is referring to inflation being transitory and he's asserting or at least implying that if inflation is transitory, then pigs must fly. That's one interpretation I kind of saw or at least was implied, but in any case, it's not totally clear exactly what this is. Or alternatively, he might be referring to uh, these asset prices are valid and accurate if pigs can fly. Whatever the case might be, that appears to be what he's saying. So if we unpackage this a little bit, we can start to think about, well, what could be causing this inflation bubble or this speculative bubble and what could it be in? Well, let's have a little bit of a think about some of this. So say we're looking at asset prices. We can talk about several asset classes. So in no particular order, let's look at this. Firstly, let's look at things like cryptocurrency. Now, Michael Burry has previously stated that there is a lot of leverage in cryptocurrency and that there's a lot of speculation in cryptocurrency. So presumably this statement is also pertaining to crypto. So pertaining to things like Bitcoin amongst other cryptocurrencies. Although Bitcoin has somewhat attenuated down recently, it certainly is still higher than it was this time last year. So he could certainly be referring to things like Bitcoin as an example. He could also be referring to real estate prices, which have been increasing in many markets. And one can argue that yields on real estate have not been increasing, i.e. with rent moratoriums and the like, real estate has been an underperforming asset class. So he could certainly be referring to that. He could be referring to stock prices. Now, stock prices are at basically an all time high at the moment, like it will fluctuate day to day. So let's not say all time high, but they are really high and they are higher than they were at the beginning of 2020. So we're basically seeing a situation where stock prices are higher than they were pre-pandemic, even though one can argue that companies aren't quite as well off as they were before the pandemic, because growth prospects have been kind of crunched in a number of assets, i.e. in airlines and the like, 
and it doesn't look like they're going to get back to pre-pandemic levels for quite some time. Now, while GDP levels in some countries are back where they were before the pandemic, this is not necessarily widespread. So it's quite possible that for many of these situations, we are seeing maybe stock prices being above fundamentals is what he's likely getting at there. Likely because if the stock price is simply the present value of all future earnings, which to plug my own book is what I get in my valuation book and my valuation e-course, links in the description below, if the price of these securities should just be the present value of all of their cash flows, and these cash flows have A, not necessarily increased, and B, the growth prospects have not gotten better, then why would their share price have gone up? So it could also be a reference to share prices as well. Furthermore, it could be a reference to specific shares. So for example, a reference to Tesla, a reference to AMC, a reference to GameStop. And it would not surprise me if there's a slight reference in there to specific companies where we're getting a bubble. Also, anecdotally, there's a increase in prices in other asset classes. So for example, other asset classes like vehicles and the like, so used cars, particularly used exotic cars have gone up in value. Now, this is a inherently an illiquid market. So I don't want to necessarily put too much emphasis on it, but he might also be referring to those types of asset classes. And to some extent, the feed through into those exotic asset classes or exotic cars could easily be because the other asset classes are so highly valued. People are seeing those other asset classes overpriced. So they're looking for somewhere else to park their money. And that somewhere else happens to be in vehicles or other luxury assets. So we could easily be referring to many different asset classes here. Cryptocurrency, stocks, specific types of stocks, real estate, other types of assets such as cars and the like. Furthermore, he could be asserting that this is propped up by low interest rates. Now, previously in the year, Michael Barry had asserted that there could be hyperinflation, particularly asserted that when there's so much cheap money floating around and when the velocity of money is so low, you're going to end up with a lot of money going into the economy. And while velocity of money is low, you don't get that inflation impact. But as soon as the velocity of money picks back up, i.e. people go out and spend, you could end up with hyperinflation. He's previously asserted this. Now, this comment is eerily timed to be contemporaneous with the Federal Reserve uh, basically making comments about inflation and interest rates and the like. So if interest rates are at an all-time low, well, an incredible low at the moment, and there is an expectation of inflation potentially picking back up, his comment could easily be directed to the idea that there's kind of a ticking time bomb in terms of interest rates going back up and crunching asset values. Now, it is necessary to note here that economists in general are predicting maybe a 25 basis point increase in interest rates toward the end of 2023, so not imminently, and maybe a 50 basis point increase in 2024. So economists don't appear to be thinking that there's going to be a massive crunch at the moment. Bond yields are a little bit all over the place, at the time of recording, they're about 1.5% for a 10-year bond yield. It's been fluctuating, but it's down on the high from this year at about 1.7%. So the market does appear to have attenuated somewhat its interest rate expectations. But in any case, that's a bit of a summary about Michael Burry's recent tweet, where he's asserted that there is an asset bubble in all things, and presumably this bubble could end, and it appears to be timed to coincide with some of the information about the Federal Reserve and potentially the prospect of there being a slight bursting of this bubble if interest rates were to be increased. That appears to be what he's getting at here. Now, certainly I have no monopoly on ideas about Michael Burry. So if you think that I have missed anything, if you think I've completely misinterpreted what he said, you think he's getting at something totally different that I haven't even touched upon. It would be interesting to hear your thoughts as well, because obviously I could have missed something. But otherwise, it would be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I very much hope to see you for future videos as well. And I hope this video has been at least somewhat informative to you, at least not too dreary anyway. And like I said, I hope to see you for future videos as well. Bye.